the price of apples in the south is higher and the price of apples in the north is lower. But there is still a price difference, a price differential. Why is the price still different? It's because of transport and other costs. And when these transport and other costs um, are as big as the price differential, there will be no motive for profit-motivated traders to go on buying apples from the south and selling them to the north. So this exercise has taught you something very important. It's helped you to manipulate supply and demand curves and see what the movement of supply and demand curves does to the equilibrium price in markets. But there's something extra that you may not have noticed that you can learn from manipulating supply and demand curves in this way in the context of arbitrage. There's a very similar process which takes place where profit-motivated traders buy up at one moment in time, transport goods across time and sell when the price is higher at a different time of the year. So, for example, you have commodities where the harvest appears, supply is great and price is low, and then during the winter time, there's not much coming onto the market and the equilibrium price is much higher. So now we have a price differential. doesn't exist across geographical space. It exists across time. And profit-motivated traders can buy up at the time of year when prices are low, causing prices to be higher than they otherwise would have been in their absence. And then they sell at a time of year when prices would otherwise be very high and depress the price. So the effect of this process is to reduce price differences over time. But we don't call that process arbitrage. We have another name for that. Now, do you recognize what that process is? It's possible that you haven't thought of it, but actually, you know the process very well. This is speculation. That's what speculators do. The diagrams you drew exactly describe the process of speculation. The speculator buys when prices are low, holds on to the goods until prices are high, and then expects to resell at a profit. And the process of speculation reduces price differences over a period of time. So people who are not economists think about speculation as being extremely damaging for economies that there are these professional people who sit in Zurich offices with a bank of phones going buy, sell, sell, buy, and all over the world economies are being destroyed by these people's behavior. In fact, what speculators do is they reduce price differences over time by buying when prices are low and selling when prices are high. Do they eliminate price differences entirely? No. We saw that in the context of arbitrage, there is some price differential because of transport costs. Well, there are transport costs over time. You have to buy. You have the costs of holding and storing the goods and selling later in the year. So the effect of speculation is to reduce price differences over time without eliminating them. So arbitrage and speculation are the same process, one taking place over distance, the other taking place over time. And you can look in markets and see the extent to which arbitrageurs and speculators cause price differences to be smaller. In some markets, transport costs are incredibly small. The market for shares so you can buy a share in the north or in the south for pretty much the same price. There are no transport costs. It's simply the 
press of some electronic button. But in the market for housing, you can have huge differences in the price of a similar house just a few miles apart because the costs of transporting a house from one part of the country to another is enormous. So arbitrage and speculation reduce price differences, they don't eliminate them. So the exercise has helped you with two things. One, feeling confident about the use of supply and demand curves. Two, understanding something about profit-motivated traders and the effect of these traders on market prices.